सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट केयरफुली द मोर थिंग्स चेंज इन पॉलिटिक्स द मोर दे रिमेन द सेम इन द कांग्रेस वेन द कांग्रेस वर्किंग कमेटी द अपोजिशन पार्टी टॉप डिसीजन मेकिंग बॉडी मेट ऑन संडे वन वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग फायर वर्क because the meeting took place just a couple of days after gulam nabi azad had quit the congress calling out rahul gandhi and his cotri knowing congress leaders one expected them to go for azad bashing in the cwc meeting just to impress the gandhis who were attending uh, the meeting virtually from abroad the meeting however turned out to be a quiet and rather sedate affair they just postponed the presidential election by about a month as per the revised schedule election to the post of congress president will be held on the 17th of october and the results will be declared two days later whether it will be a mere formality with rahul gandhi or a gandhi nominee elected unopposed or someone will challenge their leadership will be clear by the 30th of september the last day for filing nominations as a selfish journalist i really hope that someone throws his or her hat into the ring and there is a contest The last time there was a contest was uh, way back in 2000 when Jitendra Prasad had challenged Sonia Gandhi's leadership. Sonia's victory was a great given then, but the way her camp followers went after Jitendra Prasad then during the campaign was terrible. In Patna in Mumbai for instance he wasn't even allowed to enter the party offices. At some places Congress workers who went to meet him were beaten up by the other camp. I mean the more dominant faction. Anyway, Jitendra Prasad ended up with just 94 votes. in an electoral college uh, comprising over 7500 coming back to sunday cwc meeting congress leaders claimed that the polls were postponed by a month because of incomplete electoral college in seven eight states official reasons aside the postponement gives the gandhis more time to plan rahul gandhi's future while the dust raised by azad settles down so why are the gandhis buying time that's the question i'll be dealing with in this episode of politically correct But let me first talk a bit about the CWC meeting, and also about what Gulam Nabi Azad is up to. Why people were expecting fireworks in the CWC meeting is because Congress leaders love melodrama, especially when when it concerns the Gandhis. Remember 2004 when Sonia Gandhi had refused to become the Prime Minister. The way Congress leaders had chosen to show their loyalty to her then was quite dramatic. A tearful Rinka Chaudhary had then given veteran actor Govinda a run for his money. Govinda called Sonia mother while urging her not to renounce prime ministership. Rinka Chaudhary implored her not to make them orphans. Anyway, cut to 2013 when Rahul Gandhi was appointed a, a party vice president at an AICC session in Jaipur. In his speech, he disclosed that you know Sonia had come to see him the previous night and cried because she understood that power is poison. That famous power is poison speech. Lo and behold, The entire Birla Auditorium in Jaipur was sobbing and crying after Rahul said that. I was there, and frankly, I was rather amused to see everyone around me sobbing and crying. You know, Sheila Dixit, for instance, she first hugged Rahul Gandhi, and then borrowed his hanky to wipe her tears. Janardhan Dwedi, he got up to speak. He started saying how Rahul Gandhi was a clever and Prakash Punch, you know, someone who gives light. and then suddenly janardan dwedi broke down i could see ashok gehlot wiping his tears it was just a bit too much for an outsider like me think of all those dramatic scenes and you know what a dampener sunday's cwc meeting was azad must have felt rather relieved to see his former party colleagues sparing him even when they had a chance to score brownies before the gandhis by the way two words in azad's five page resignation letter stood out for me he said inexperienced psychophants he said that you know inexperienced psychophants are running the party affairs in the congress today what he didn't say in as many words is that experienced psychophants are therefore hurting to be fair the issues raised by azad are already relevant so many other leaders have said similar things about rahul gandhi and his so called cotri destroying the congress but well look who is talking the congress has become virtually irrelevant in jammu and kashmir today i am mean, that is when a son of the soil gulam nabi azad 
held such high positions in the party and also congress led governments at the center i mean he was the chief minister too so why is the congress in such a pathetic state in jammu and kashmir today well azad won't answer that so what does azad who is 73 years old now i mean what does he want to achieve by forming a political party he denies any plan to ally with the bjp but the fact is his party can certainly help the bjp in jammu and kashmir to a certain extent i would say all he has to do is to split muslim votes of non bjp parties especially on his home turf the chenab valley you know he comes from doda so there are eight mlas from uh, the valley there are three districts i mean this is not a big number but in the context of jnk even this can be significant you know how the bjp uh, dominates uh, the jammu division which has 43 seats in the 90 member ut assembly the bjp would like to sweep jammu in the assembly elections so in the ddc polls in 2020 december 2020 i think uh, the national conference had managed to win 25 out of 140 seats in the ddc election in the jammu region the bjp would therefore like to neutralize the nc in jammu and this is where gulam nabi azad's party can help by splitting nc's muslim votes in jammu region at least because azad does not have any you know standing in the valley as such once the bjp sweeps jammu which has 43 seats i mean it's likely to likely to be a fractured assembly because the 47 seats in the kashmir valley will then be split among half a dozen parties so if there is a hung assembly and the bjp emerges as the single largest party there are all kinds of possibilities for the bjp in a post poll scenario it can hope to f- form the government it would be like a dream come true for the bjp and gulam nabi azad may have a role to play in this anyway we are digressing a bit too much let me revert to the cwc meeting and the main question as to why the gandhis are buying time so the cwc met at a time when there was intense speculation about rahul gandhi's reluctance to become the congress president at least that's what his spin doctors would have us believe the cwc meeting was a perfect forum for rahul gandhi to declare his intent not to contest the election but he did not utter a word about it congress leaders would have us believe that sonia gandhi wants ashok gehlot to become the next congress president and not rahul the idea would of course please sachin pilot who has been waiting to replace gehlot as the rajasthan chief minister by the way don't you think a dynamic young face like pilot as the congress has national president could serve the party's cause better but the gandhis may probably feel more secure with the 71 year old gehlot as a stop gap arrangement these are all in the domain of speculation though at the cwc meeting the gandhis kept mum it's good to let people speculate about rahul gandhi's intended renunciation but if the gandhi said formally while hoping to be dissuaded it may have unintended consequences you never know i mean most congress leaders may end up welcoming the decision even while appreciating the gandhi's so called tyag or sacrifice so what are the gandhi's up to they must be hearing the eerie sound of silence in the old days you know if a congress leader had said even a fraction of what azad said about a gandhi there would be a storm the rank and file have however reacted to raja azad's resignation letter with a strict silence so where are those 5.6 crore members that the congress enlisted in its last uh, membership drive you don't see any anybody on the street sonia has been heading the party for about 22 years since 98 almost as long as the total presidential tenures of all other nehru gandhi family members put together you can include motilal nehru jawaharlal nehru indira gandhi and rajiv gandhi all these four were congress presidents and their total tenures are almost a little less than in fact less than what uh, the sonia's tenure is of about 22 years add to it rahul gandhi's tenure of one and a half years as congress president so about two and a half decades of party presidentship and no congress functionary is rushing to the party headquarters in delhi or a state capital or even a district congress office when the gandhi's are under attack and are reportedly planning to step away 
that's why I am talking about this eerie silence that she must be noticing. The Gandhis could also have, you know, got a measure of their standing among party cadres last month when the Congress organized protests against ED's questioning of Sonia and Rahul Gandhi. It received, in fact, a lukewarm response. There were no spontaneous agitations. And the mobilization of Congress leaders and workers in Delhi led to the blockade of just one road. I mean, I was there on the road that day. Well, traffic movement remained smooth throughout the city. It, in such circumstances, the Gandhi's next move would be a no-brainer. They could simply hand over the party's reins to someone else and have fun from the sidelines. I mean, let someone else run the Congress and fail. That would make Rahul Gandhi's renunciation worthwhile. If there is no change in the Congress's fortune even under a non-Gandhi, all these party snipers would go silent. Rahul can then proudly come back to helm the Congress. No Congress person would then hold a grudge against the Gandhis. And from then on, they can run the Congress forever and ever. But then, they would like a puppet president who would do what they want and vacate the chair whenever they want. But who should the Gandhis trust to keep the seat warm for Rahul Gandhi? After all, Narasimha Rao had also stood with Indira Gandhi when she was fighting in the syndicate in 1969 and even during the emergency. Remember the St. Kitts case in which Narasimha Rao along with others had allegedly forged documents to show that, you know, our VP Singh's son Ajay Singh had a bank account in the Caribbean islands. That was in 1988-89 when uh, VP Singh had emerged as a challenger to Rajiv Gandhi. Later on, Rao was of course discharged by a court. But this scandal tells you how loyal Narasimha Rao was to the Gandhis until he became the Prime Minister. There is no dearth of loyalists even today, but Narasimha Rao and Sitaram Kesri haven't really left many sweet memories for the Gandhis. Sonia Gandhi has in fact seen worse. I mean, could she have imagined P.S. Sangma joining Sharad Pawar and Tariq Anwar to rebel against her? Could she have foreseen Jyotirayit Sindhya defecting to the BJP? Therefore, even if Rahul Gandhi is disinclined to become the Congress president, again, as his spin doctors would have us believe, the Gandhis would be circumspect about the succession plan. They must dread the prospects of another family loyalist going the raw way after becoming Congress president. Again, suppose they repose faith in one of the loyalists and make him or her the Congress president. What if there is a miracle and the Congress starts winning elections under a non-Gandhi president? That would make Rahul's return really very difficult. What would the Gandhis do then? I mean, would they be reconciled to the end of the Nehru Gandhi era in the Congress? The Gandhis must be factoring in all these questions. They may want to opt out of the presidential race only if they are convinced of the party's continuous downslide under a non-Gandhi president. That's one option. Another option for the Gandhis is to blazon it out. Leaving control of the party is risky. When Sonia Gandhi decided to stay away from politics after her husband's assassination in 91, Congress leaders kept coming to her as they needed her to fix their rivals, you know, Simha Rao, Kesri, others, and also to keep the party together. They kept coming to her also because they thought they wouldn't win without a Gandhi. Well, things have changed now. The Gandhis can't win elections, they can't run the party. Today, if Rahul Gandhi declares that he is not contesting the election, Congress party's rank and file may feel rather relieved. And that's why the Gandhis must stay put and retain possession of the family jewel, the Congress. At least this is what Sonia has been trying to do since Rahul resigned in 2019. Because leaving the party even with a regent is very risky. Nobody can stop Rahul Gandhi from becoming the Congress president again, if he so wishes. But this option has other pitfalls. Of 50 assembly elections held since 2014, the Congress has won only seven. And during the same period, the party could retain power in only one out of the 13 states that he ruled. So, look at this data. I mean, Rahul Gandhi must be convinced of reversing this losing streak if he returns to the helm as the Congress president. Because if this slide continues, there will be many Gulam Nabi Azads raising their heads in rebellion every now and then, especially after electoral defeats. And the Congress party's footprints would be shrinking further and further. That's how the Gandhis are confronted with a Hobson's choice, I would say.
And that's why they have got the CWC to give them one more month to think it through. As it is, I mean, as it seems, it's either the Gandhis or the Congress. And if party leaders, or Congress leaders fail to get their acts together now, it will not be either or. They will be neither the Gandhis nor the Congress. That's all from me in this episode of Politically Correct. Thanks for watching.